So I wanted to start off with something that might be a little bit controversial. Uh, we're going to do some stuff, really cool stuff today. Um, we're going to talk about the responsibilities of the unconscious mind. We're going to talk about how to hack neurology, uh, a really cool process, the inner power meditation, uh, which will be really fun for a lot of you. And to, to really get your, your brains into the right place to understand how this process works even more. Uh, so I'm very excited for this week. So I want to start off and I want to kind of drop a bomb on you. A good bomb. A good bomb. And that is the law of attraction sucks. The law of attraction sucks. And I just want you to own that for a second. Type it in for me. Comment underneath this video. The law of attraction sucks. Why does the law of attraction suck, everybody? I can see a lot of you over there on Facebook land. If you would like to join me uh, here live for Zoom, here you go. The law of attraction sucks. Why does it suck? That's a good question. Hmm. Seems like a strange thing for someone like me to say. But it does. Here's why it sucks. The, the first reason is you can't turn it off is you can't turn it off. You, it is a 100% law that if you plant a carrot seed in the ground, it will pull from that ground everything it needs to grow carrots. It is a law. It is an absolute law. And so it, you can't turn it off. And here's why that can cause challenges or problems is what you see and what you have in your life is a direct reflection of the law of, of attraction working. They've even studied it to call it the Matthew effect. Has anyone heard of the Matthew effect before? Hmm. It's a very, very interesting, uh, a very interesting principle that, that science is really showing us. And it can be observed in many, many aspects of life. And it can be summarized by saying this, the, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. Now, this is, uh, this is obviously off the, the gospel of Matthew, if you, if you didn't know. And um, I've got that, that here just so we can use it, which is for everyone who has been more, who, who, <laughs> for everyone who has will more be given and he will have abundance. But from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. So they use this biblical term and, and they, they call it the Matthew effect. And it's, it's really about how the law of attraction sucks. And that's really interesting. Here's, what, here's what's really saying is you can't turn it off, but also you can see your attraction point. You can see why the law of attraction sucks based on what it is that you've attracted and created in your life. And here's why it sucks even more. And I hope that you guys are getting this. You can't turn it off. It's always on, but also you didn't have control over what was created unconsciously. So your, your formative years, ages between zero and four, zero and seven, whichever one you want to subscribe to, a lot happened. A lot happened. Maybe there was trauma. Maybe there was abuse. Maybe there was scarcity. Maybe there was judgment. Maybe... It was a completely happy home and you didn't know how to live up to it. You could have made any sort of decisions back then. But what happens is like that story of the baby elephant that gets held by this small pole and small piece of rope in the ground. You grow up to be big and strong, yet that is still holding you back. And that is why I believe and I say the law of attraction sucks. Who's with me? Can someone type it in? The law of attraction sucks gone it's fun to do it sucks because you can't just change it by thinking something different you can't just change it by thinking something different let me ask you all a question do we get everything we think about we think about something do we get it yes or no 
do we get everything with it? It'd be really bad. It'd be really bad if everything the 14 year old version of me thought about manifested in this world. I'm sure it's the same for you too. I've definitely had evil thoughts. Uh, I've definitely had crazy thoughts. I've definitely had all sorts of things. <laughs> True. <laughs> so the law of attraction sucks, but it's not your thoughts that that create the attraction point. And so this is why it sucks so much is is we are attracting what we are. And so we try to get something different or to have something different. But until we are different, until our attraction point is different, we don't see it. Now, just like the carrot seed, you can plant it in the ground and it's going to attract in whatever it needs to create carrots, right? You can put something else in that exact same ground. It's going to attract in something else. It's going to pull it in. It knows how to attract it. It is a different vibration. Here's the problem with being a human is we get to choose. We get to choose what our attraction point is. And sometimes this can, uh, <laughs> yeah, me too, Nicole. I'm glad you're not a carrot. We get to choose our attraction point. Now, what happens is you have a life and you're here and you have a life and inside that life are all sorts of things. So you have, maybe you have a house, you have a job, you have friends, you have, I don't know, your family, you have a car, you have skills, you have enemies, you have exes, <laughs> you have emotions, you have beliefs, you have all sorts of things, right? We could just go on forever. Now, what holds all of this together? Well, it's you. Your energy is the thing that's holding that all together. Now, what happens and, and the reason why sometimes change is hard is because when we start changing this energy, we start being different. Guess what? The way that we connected to our friends, it changes anymore. If we go from a, a not enough to having it all, this energy changes. Our energy changes and our job doesn't stick with us anymore. Our energy changes and things have to start dropping off. And this is what comes and brings into today's topic is because the law of attraction sucks. You have what it is that you have in your life based on your own frequency, based on your own energy, based on who you are. But who you are wasn't consciously decided by you. Let me ask you a question. When did you decide that you were you? That's an interesting question. When did you decide that you were you? Is it true that two people can grow up in the same house if you've got siblings who are completely different to you? So it's not, it's not nurture. You made decisions. You decided who you're going to be. And a lot of these things, it's time for us to redecide our new attraction point. It's time to redecide what we're going to create. It's, try, it's time to be someone new. Just type in a yes if you agree with that. Because the law of attraction sucks unless you know how to work it. True? It really sucks because it's just going to keep creating. It's going to keep on being attracted and gluing into all your old thoughts, all your old emotions, everything you've been sending out. I like to say that it's like an echo. The universe, the world is a mirror. It's like an echo. What you've put out bounces back, bounces back. You have to start changing that. And, and when you look at the Matthew effect and you realize that those that have more get more, those that have less lose it all, it's because of the law of attraction. And it's been proven scientifically. You can test it. You can, you can ring a, uh, a tuning fork on one side of a football field. And if you have the same tuning fork tuned at the same, the same vibration on the other side of the football field, it will start to ring at the same time. However, if you put another tuning fork right next to it that's a little bit different, it won't. It won't catch it. You know the law of attraction. You know this to be true, but we still try to deny it. Think about this. How the heck do you think that it, do you remember the old radios and you used to tune it? How does that work? Think about this for a second. Like you guys are all old enough to remember radios where you had to tune them, yeah? before digital came out. This example is not going to work in 10 years. 
but flying through the air are all those different radio radio signals, right? And then we tune it and we attracted the right vibration. If something else got attracted, pulled in, it changed it. We changed the frequency. Now that's the same. That's the same as this. Is you're in you're in a society where there's so much stuff there, you're just tuned to the wrong frequency. Does that make sense? You're walking down and you're listening to I don't have enough FM. Does that make sense? And we need to tune ourselves to I fucking have everything AM, you know? And that's the interesting thing to think about is we see it everywhere and we are that vibration. We are that frequency. So I want you to know the law of attraction sucks unless you know how to use it. And when you know how to use it, you'll understand that your thoughts do not create reality. I can sit here and go, I think about a million, a million dollars. There's a million, there's going to be a million dollars over there. It, it doesn't happen that way. We all know this to be true. And so thoughts don't create reality. Who you are creates your reality. Who you are. So we have to realize that when you plant a new seed of you being a new way, do you expect that tomorrow there's the forest? Would you expect that? You plant a new seed, I want the forest there. No, but does it mean that it's not created? Does it mean it's not created? See, we've got to understand that everything's created twice, right? It's created twice. First, that whole forest was created in the invisible. It was sitting in the potential of that seed. It was sitting there. It was created. It was done. The seed didn't change. It just said, I'm growing a pine forest. It didn't go, which one am I doing? What am I doing? So that's what I'm doing. And it was done. The seed had no doubt. Put me in the right place. Let me do my thing. It's going to happen. That's what I am. Does that make sense? That's what I am. That's what happens. And so we have to understand that too, right? That we're going to change. We're going to shift. And then when we shift that attraction point, we've got to stay in one attraction point for long enough for the stuff to show up, <laughs> right? For it to happen. We've got to stay in that attraction point. Type in a yes if you get it. We've got to get there. Now, then a, a forest shows up. No. It has to get planted. Has, there has to be some action that is taken. It has to get planted. It has to get the right water, the right environment, the right. So there's things that have to happen to make it happen. So everything's always created twice. And this is one of the big mysteries of uh, alchemy. When I study with my mentor, it's a big mystery of what we try to go, well, what do you mean? And so a lot of us are creating one reality internally and trying to create another reality externally. We've got an internal reality that is creating the past. And then we're trying to act like this other future person here. But this is our attraction point with all these old things. This is in our mind. And then this is what we're trying to create in reality. And so here's the thing. It doesn't matter how much action you take if you've got the wrong seed. If you've got seeds of doubt, if you've got seeds of not good enough, doesn't matter how much digging and planting and watering and fertilizing you do, you're just going to grow lots of doubt, lots of uncertainty. Trust me, you see it. People don't get what they want because they don't understand this core principle. And it is so, 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 so important that we, we cover this and we understand the responsibilities of the unconscious mind. Who's excited about today? Because I'm on a I'm on a roll. Shall I keep going? Should we keep going? Cool. So let's think about this this unconscious mind. Can you guys see this? All right, the unconscious. I hope so. The unconscious mind. What's the you know, what's the, the goal of this, this un, unconscious mind? What, what's it there to do? So there's a lot of things that it's there to do, right? But, but the big thing, as Maureen says, is it's there to keep us safe. 
but I, I've got some notes here that I'm going to go through because I want you to learn and understand what the unconscious mind is there to do. Now, firstly, you've got to realize that there's multiple minds going on. But one way I like to break them down is you have an unconscious and then a conscious, okay? The conscious mind is the one that I'm talking with right now. I'm here with you. Well, well let's just say that anyway. That's conscious. Conscious wants, write this down, conscious wants quality of life. So conscious wants to succeed. Conscious wants to have nice things. Conscious wants to achieve. Conscious wants to thrive. Conscious, the conscious brain is the ego. It's the, it's the personality. It wants to do lots of stuff. It wants quality. Whereas the unconscious wants quantity. It just wants to stay around for a long time. Make sense? And this is one of the biggest battles in, of humanity is we have one brain that says, go jump off that bridge and go bungee jumping. It'll be fun. And then we have this other part of the brain goes, what the heck are you doing? You're completely crazy. Those are rocks and you're a human and that's a bridge. Don't jump off the bridge. And so we have this safety, this handbrake behind us and it's there for a reason. And so here's the difference. And I want you guys to really picture this. The unconscious is always saying, let's do what we've always done. Let's do what we've always done. We know we can predict the future by looking at the past. Does that make sense? The unconscious says, I can predict the future by looking at the past and we should keep it the same because we've survived it up until now. And I don't give a crap about how happy you feel. I don't care, care about thriving. I care about surviving. That's it. So all that the unconscious wants to do is take the past and put it on the future. Take the past, put it to the future. Take the past, put it onto the future. Whereas the conscious mind wants the complete opposite. It says, yeah, we've done that. That's great. Let's increase the quality, let's do this, let's get a bigger car, let's have a family, let's get this, let's do this, let's start a charity, let's start a business, let's do this. That's not good enough, I want more. You see? And who's felt this civil war inside their mind at times? Well, it's interesting because the unconscious is what's running the show. The unconscious is, is running the show. I mean, th this is 99% of everything. The unconscious is making sure you're digesting your food right now. It's listening to me. It's, it's looking at me. It's consuming this. It's, it's storing all the information. It's doing all of these things. If you don't have to think through it, it's your unconscious automatic brain that's doing it. And it's doing nearly everything right? It runs the show. Now, this unconscious brain speaks only in feelings. So when you get feelings, that's its way of communicating because it doesn't communicate in words. But the feelings can create words in your brain. The unconscious brain can send you a jolt, a dose of guilt, it can send you a dose of anxiety. It can load up a chemical cocktail and hit you with it and pretty much stop you doing anything. It's very, very, very skilled at keeping you safe. It's done it for a long time and it's super important. Are you guys with me on this? And so that's, this is the unconscious brain. But here's the other thing is through repetition, we can train the unconscious. Hmm. Question, how many of you would like to know how to train your unconscious to listen to what you want? Hmm. Now, that's what we're going to go through today. Here's the truth. As a human... We are born with the smallest amount of neural connections of nearly any mammal. You look at most other mammals, when they come onto the planet, they can walk. They can do a lot more than a human. 
we like basically come out and we've still got to learn for a good four, five, six, seven years until we even catch up to what a puppy can do in its first month. Now, so this is what's interesting is the human brain is the most plastic. It can learn so fast. So I want you to write this down. You already trained it. Let me give you an example. I'll take you back to when you're 14, 15 or 16. First time you went to hop in a motor vehicle and drive it. Maybe some of you 17, 18, 19. You jump in the car. You've got somebody next to you and they're going to teach you to drive. They're sweating. Their, their palms are clamming up. They don't know what to do. So they cross their arms and they say, all right, put your foot down on the clutch, right? Put it in first. Seat belt on. Check your mirrors, right? <laughs> Now, when you first learned to drive, it was a conscious game, true? You had to think through it. Or if you've seen someone doing it, they're still thinking through it. You see the learner plates, they're sitting at the, they're sitting at the roundabout and they're like, what's going on? There's cars coming around this way. There's all these things. What's happening? This is crazy. And they're so slow. They have to, they're thinking about everything. But what happens, guys? After repetition, what happens? What happens? Well, through repetition, we train our body. I want you to get this. We've trained our body to take over a freaking complicated thing. Who's been driving on the motorway over 100 Ks an hour or 60 miles an hour and realize they have no idea where they've been for the last minute? Who's just unconsciously been driving? Who's even gone past their exit and gone, how did that happen? You're in such a tiff with someone. You're so pissed off. I can't believe they don't. Blah, 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 blah. Wait, wait, where the heck am I? Or you get so engaged in that new song and you're driving along and you're belting out the, the best ballad. You're, it's like this amazing concert featuring you in your car. And, wait, where, where have I been? Like, what's going on? Do you realize all the things that are happening for you to do that? You'll be, your, your body is, is staring, it's, it's adjusting, it might even have changed gears. It's looking around, it might have changed the stereo. All these things are happening all unconsciously. Don't think that's, who thinks that's pretty incredible, by the way? You trained your body how to do that. Does this make sense? You trained it, so now it becomes unconscious. You see this in great sportsmen. You see this in uh, when people learn to dance. You see this here. So I took up tennis just over a year ago. I never played tennis in my life before. Now I'm out on the court. I'm, I'm not thinking about it. when I first was out there. I was like, right, got to stand like this, got to do this. And I had to think through it, right? But now I've trained my body. I'm playing in a good grade. Guys have been playing their whole life. The serve comes out. I'm hitting it. I'm putting that the angle of the racket at the perfect place, the perfect time, just to touch it over the net if I want to play a drop shot. I'm coming over the backhand, I'm, but I'm not thinking about it. Who's understanding this? This is crucial. This is crucial. Because I want you to hear this. The unconscious mind runs the show, but you run the unconscious mind. It's like training an animal. It's like training a dog or training a horse. You train it and then it does that. Does that make sense? You have just trained it in the wrong way. Who likes the sound of that, by the way? You've just trained it to be like your parents. Scarcity, work hard, sacrifice. You've just trained it the wrong way. Make sense? And that's what's, uh, that's what's so powerful to me. That's what's so powerful. So like today's, today's call, I wanted, to, I wanted to talk about that. I wanted you guys to understand it. And then I truly wanted to make sure that we go through it and we shift it. Because the unconscious brain is what's running the show. And most of us are just letting the unconscious just take us for a ride 
do what it is that it's been trained to do, and we're not controlling it. We think that we can go through affirmations, right? And that we can think our way through it, but that it's not getting anywhere. It's not getting anywhere if we just think about it. Now, when I study things from, you know, like Bruce Lipton and I study what they're doing, I understand that, that truthfully, the law of attraction sucks massively. It really does. It doesn't have a conscious. It doesn't care. It just follows instructions. But we've got to understand how to give it the right instructions and then condition it to actually change so then the actions create what we want. And this is the thing that we do inside this process, inside the magnetic mind. This is why we have you guys here for the 13 weeks. It's why it's so, it's so big. It's why it's so important. And that is everyone's starting to get a good grasp of what the unconscious brain is. It is your job to train it, but it doesn't listen to just words. You see, it doesn't listen to just words. It's not just that. It actually needs you to go into the feeling and that feeling is what's going to train it. So just imagine this for a second. Just imagine that for 30 years, you've been thinking a certain thought. And let's just say that that thought that you've been thinking is not, I'm not enough. That thought, if you think I'm not enough, you think that thought for 30 years, guess what? That thought will send a chemical, it will send a transmitter down into your body. A neural peptide, a transmitter will be sent down to your body to then be turned into a feeling. Think about it for a second. You can think about something and realize that you then feel it in your body. You can think about a sexual fantasy. You can think about it gets sent to your body. You can think about something you're supposed to do and you can feel guilty. You think about something a neural transmitter is sent and then that turns into how you should feel, how you feel turns into an action. So the transmitter goes down and it goes down into your body. It's gonna go into glands and all sorts of things. But what's gonna happen is after it goes there, out the other side is gonna become an action. And that action is then gonna reinforce that first thing. Now, what's interesting is when we look in here, now this, you can call this chakras or you, you, know, you can call this genes whatever, you can understand and study the epigenetics, but, but here I just want you to think about the unconscious, okay, because we can call it all sorts of things. I want to keep it simple. Now, let me share this with you, and Bruce Lipton talks about this a lot. If you've been thinking this thought for 30 years, and you send that same neurotransmitter down to your body for 30 years, if not enough, guess what your body does? It physically changes. It physically changes to be able to receive that chemical because it keeps getting it. It physically changes to receive that chemical. Does that make sense? So if you keep sending it anxiety, sending it anxiety, sending it anxiety, sending it anxiety, it's going to change just to receive it. Okay. And it's massive to understand that because as soon as you shift, like I said right at the beginning, as soon as you shift, and you get out of this vibration, you shift to this. Guess what? Guess what happens? Your body screams out and says, well, where is my dose of anxiety? Where's my dose of not good enough? You've been giving me that for 30 years. What the heck's changed? That becomes its normal. Consider this. If a baby was born into a world that had a loud siren just going, same siren constantly, and it was just always there. And that's what it was born into. Do you think that the baby would just become familiar to this and basically stop hearing it? Probably. Well, what happens if that siren was gone? Suddenly everything would be changed. That child had grown up with that always there. Why isn't that there? What's going on? That's how it's always been. What's about to happen? Well, that's the same with this. It's the same with drug addicts. It's, a, it's the same. Once you change, once you get rid of that chemical, the body goes, give me that chemical back. Let me ask you all a question. Have you all tried to change before? You've started taking different actions, and then have you ever felt a massive surge, 
a massive, massive, massive surge of some sort of uncomfortable emotions. Has that ever happened? <laughs> yeah. So, so you go start something new, right? Like maybe you have to go start a business or some sales calls or you go start to do something and then all of a sudden, this huge amount of crappy, annoying emotions come and hit you. And it's massive. And then what happens is you get right back into that not enough feeling. This is your unconscious brain hijacking to get you straight back into that feeling. Are you with me? So yeah, seemingly out of nowhere. So you make a decision, right? You make a decision. You're like, yeah, cool. I'm going to go do this thing. And you go there and you go to do it. You say you're all excited. And then you start and then all of a sudden, boom, all this doubt, anxiety, all, all these other things come in. They come in and it derails you and you end up just getting back to the way you've always been and you don't make the change. Is it just me or has this happened to other people too? I'll tell you the story when this really happened to me. I made millions of dollars. I retired. I went and lived uh, and, I, and I was in Bali. I was in Thailand and we thought, you know what? We're done. We're making millions of bucks. We're going to be there. I was the most stressed out person you have ever seen on a beach sipping cocktails. I was like this. It's kind of, well, I've got nothing to do. What am I going to do with my life? I'm, I'm 26. I've made a million dollars and now I've got nothing to do. What am I going to do? This sucks. Ah! I was so intense. I was so addicted to the feeling of I'm not good enough and I have to work hard. Then I'm finally trying to be there. But my body just needed that. It needed its dose because since I was six years old, it was we've got to be in the New Zealand basketball team. Let's, let's shoot baskets every single day. It was just so intense. It didn't know how to actually sit back, relax, and let it receive. Didn't know how. It'd been trained the wrong way. Type in here if you're getting this, because I really want to make sure you are. Just let me know if this is landing with you all, because we need to know how to change this. We need to know how to shift this. Now, no matter what anyone says to you, it takes time for you to change, for you to shift. So anyone says to you, hey, come to my two-day course, come to my this, come to my that, and you're all you're going to change. You probably will change. However, the the pendulum will swing back really fast because you haven't held it in the new vibrational set point long enough to actually let your body and train your body to be this new way. OK, it's basically creating a new you, creating a new habit. And so if you've got 30 years of living this one way. This is definitely the easiest way for you to do things. This is easy. This is fun. This is simple. No worries. So you spend two days. Oh, cool. Now I'm going to feel an abundance. Yeah, go to this event. Awesome. Guess what happens? All of a sudden, you find yourself back here because you have to do the meditations in the process, right? So that, that's what we do here. Every single week, we do the meditations. We, we make sure we go through it.